Lithium batteries have powered everything from phones to Teslas, but their time at the top might be coming to an end. There is a new challenger on the horizon, sodium ion batteries. They're cheaper, safer, and now powerful enough to fuel electric cars for up to 5 million kilometers. Yes, 5 million. Thanks to major breakthroughs from companies like CATL, sodium is quickly becoming the future. So can sodium really replace lithium in electric vehicles? And how are these new batteries changing the global energy market? In this video, we'll break down exactly how sodium batteries work, what makes them so revolutionary, and why they could soon power the car in your driveway. Over the last two decades, lithium-ion batteries have become the backbone of the modern tech world. They power our smartphones, laptops, electric vehicles, and even parts of our national energy grids. This dominance isn't just about efficiency, it's because lithium-ion tech was, for a while, the best option available. These batteries are lightweight, can hold a decent charge, and are relatively compact, making them perfect for mobile and high-performance applications. But here's the part you don't see in tech ads or EV commercials. Lithium is getting expensive. In early 2022, the price of lithium carbonate shot up by over 400%, peaking at more than $80,000 per metric ton. Although prices have come down since then, the volatility is a red flag. Battery makers and car manufacturers can't plan for stable, long-term production when the core material behaves like a volatile stock. Then there's the actual availability problem. Lithium isn't rare, but the type of lithium that's usable for batteries requires specific refining, and most of it comes from a handful of countries, namely Australia, Chile, and China. That concentrated supply chain means any political unrest, trade restrictions, or natural disasters in those regions can mess up global production in a heartbeat. You can't scale the future of electric transportation on a material that's hard to control. And while we're on lithium ions drawbacks, let's talk about safety. You've probably seen head headlines about Tesla's catching fire or phones exploding mid-flight. That's not rare, it's a documented issue. Lithium-ion batteries can become unstable, especially under heat, physical damage, or manufacturing flaws. When a cell overheats, it can lead to a thermal runaway, where the battery literally ignites itself and everything around it. These incidents may be infrequent, but they're not just accidents, they're a known limitation of the tech. And with more EVs and battery packs entering homes and garages, the risks increase increase. It's not fear-mongering. It's the reality of scaling a technology that's beginning to show its cracks. Most lithium is extracted using one of two methods, hard rock mining or evaporation from brine. Both methods are resource-heavy and ecologically damaging. In Chile's Atacama Desert, which holds about 40% of the world's lithium reserves, it takes roughly 500,000 gallons of water to extract just one metric ton of lithium. This has caused serious water shortages in local communities and devastated indigenous farming economies. Hard rock mining, on the other hand, comes with its own baggage. It's energy intensive and produces significant carbon emissions, ironically, in the pursuit of clean energy storage. For every ton of lithium extracted this way, roughly 15 tons of carbon dioxide are emitted, not to mention the destruction of habitats, deforestation, and toxic chemical waste that leaks into surrounding ecosystems. Then there's the human cost. In regions like the Democratic Republic of Congo, where cobalt, often paired with lithium in batteries, is mined. Child labor and unsafe working conditions are rampant, and while cobalt is being phased out in some lithium chemistries like LFP lithium iron phosphate, the supply chain is still messy. Lithium itself is already getting tangled in similar issues. In Argentina, local communities are rising in protest over water access and land degradation caused by lithium operations. Geopolitically, the lithium supply chain is fragile. China, for instance, controls a major chunk of the lithium refining process about 60% of global capacity. That gives it immense leverage over global battery production. In late 2024, when China began restricting graphite exports used in battery anodes, it sent a chilling reminder that battery materials are just as politically charged as oil used to be. Now, car manufacturers, governments, and energy companies all know that depending solely on lithium is unsustainable. The EU, for example, has already begun labeling lithium as a critical raw material and is investing billions into alternative battery research. The US Department of Energy launched several initiatives in 2023 to fast track post lithium storage tech, with sodium, zinc, and even solid state batteries getting attention. And it's not just about EVs, utility scale storage, smart grid 
grids, and home battery systems all need scalable, cheap, and safe batteries. Sodium fits that bill and does provide some unique advantages. Sodium ion batteries are just what they sound like. Batteries that use sodium instead of lithium to store and deliver energy. The overall structure and function are similar to lithium ion batteries. They have a cathode, positive electrode, an anode, negative electrode, an electrolyte that allows charged particles to move, and a separator to keep everything from shorting out. What makes them different is the type of ion that moves between the electrodes during charging and discharging. In a sodium ion battery, positively charged sodium ions move back and forth. When the battery charges, these ions leave the cathode and travel through the electrolyte into the anode, usually made from hard carbon or a similar material. During discharge, like when your EV is driving or your phone is ringing, the sodium ions reverse direction, releasing their stored energy. Chemically speaking, sodium is similar to lithium. Both are alkali metals and both form positive ions, which makes them good candidates for battery use. But sodium is bigger in atomic size and that causes some challenges. Bigger ions move less efficiently, which used to mean that sodium batteries had poor energy density and slower charging. In earlier prototypes, sodium batteries only achieved 100 to 140 watt hour per kilogram, which made them a hard sell for EVs and high performance tech. But that gap is shrinking fast. With new materials like Prussian white and refined hard carbon anodes, researchers have now boosted sodium battery energy density past 170 watt hour per kilogram, and some labs have even reported experimental densities as high as 458 watt watt hours per kilogram. According to a recent University of Houston study, that puts sodium batteries firmly in the range needed for affordable electric cars, grid storage, and smart home systems. Now, cost is where sodium really stands out. Lithium is expensive to extract and refine, and its price fluctuates wildly. Sodium, on the other hand, is cheap, up to 50 times cheaper. It can be sourced from table salt or sea brine and doesn't require the complex refining that lithium does. That means manufacturers could potentially produce sodium ion batteries batteries for 30% less than lithium iron phosphate ones. One of the biggest advantages sodium has is that it's everywhere. Literally, it's the sixth most abundant element in Earth's crust. You can extract it from salt flats, seawater, or even common rocks. That's a massive contrast to lithium, which is locked up in just a few countries and tied to unstable global markets. Because of this, sodium ion batteries open the door for a completely different kind of energy future. Instead of EVs and energy storage systems, systems being locked to countries that have access to lithium supply chains, sodium tech could be manufactured almost anywhere. This could be a game changer for developing nations that want to scale clean energy but don't have access to expensive raw materials. It also means more resilient supply chains. When China restricted graphite exports in 2024, the battery industry panicked. If similar export limits hit lithium or cobalt, EV production could be frozen overnight. With sodium, that risk is far lower. It offers a kind of stability that's becoming more important as the global demand for batteries skyrockets. According to Bloomberg NEF, global battery demand will increase more than tenfold by 2035. The only way to meet that kind of growth is to use something abundant, cheap, and easy to access. Sodium checks all those boxes. Now that we've seen how sodium could solve the world's lithium problem, the next question is, what's the catch? Well, for a while, the biggest issue was performance. Sodium just couldn't compete, but that's all changing fast. So let's have a look at the breakthrough technologies that made sodium ion batteries not just a possibility, but a serious threat to lithium batteries. The biggest shift in sodium battery technology came when CATL, the world's largest EV battery manufacturer, publicly unveiled their second generation sodium ion battery. What they revealed was something the industry wasn't fully expecting, sodium cells that could finally compete with lithium on performance. These weren't vague lab promises. These were production ready specs backed by live demos and confirmed by multiple independent sources. The energy density numbers caught everyone's attention. Cattle's commercial grade sodium ion batteries now achieve 175 watt hours per kilogram, with some experimental versions hitting a record-breaking 458 watt hours per kilogram, according to research conducted in partnership with the University of Houston. For years, sodium tech was seen as a low-density alternative for stationary storage or backup power. That view is now outdated. With these new figures, sodium ion is no longer a low-tier option. It's a serious contender for electric vehicles and mobile devices. The real leap came from material science. CATS 
ADL moved away from older anode chemistries and adopted a refined hard carbon structure derived from biomass, combined with improved Prussian white cathodes. This adjustment increased ion flow, reduced internal resistance, and significantly boosted storage capacity. It also gave sodium cells the stability they needed to handle faster charge rates and higher voltages. If you told someone two years ago that a sodium ion battery could be charged in five minutes and deliver over 500 kilometers of range, they'd assume it was a stretch. But in 2025, Cattle's Shengsing Fi 2 battery shattered those assumptions. Using their advanced hybrid technology, which combines sodium and LFP chemistry, they demonstrated an EV platform charging from 0 to 80% in under 5 minutes, reaching a usable range of 530 kilometers. That wasn't just a spec sheet claim. Multiple test drives and independent engineering reviews verified the numbers. One test with a Deeple S07 prototype equipped with the Shengsing V2 battery confirmed 525 kilometers of real-world range in mixed city highway driving after a five-minute ultra-fast charge session. This tech makes even high-end lithium batteries look outdated. For EV owners frustrated with long charge times and range anxiety, this is a potential game-changer. Imagine pulling into a rest stop, plugging in, grabbing a coffee, and driving off fully charged five minutes later. That's what the Shengsing V2 delivers. Traditional lithium batteries also degrade over time. Even the best LFP cells lose performance after 2,000 to 3,000 cycles, roughly 300,000 to 500,000 kilometers in an EV. But CAT-TL's new sodium batteries are pushing beyond anything seen before. Their latest long-life sodium prototypes are rated for 12,000 to 15,000 full charge cycles without serious degradation. In practical terms, that means they can handle around 4.8 to 5 million kilometers of use. That's enough to outlive the car, the second car after that, and possibly even your grandkids car. And all this comes with lower thermal risk and zero reliance on critical materials like lithium or cobalt. The implications are huge. It means you could own an EV for decades with no battery replacement. It also opens doors to long-haul applications like commercial fleets, delivery services, and autonomous taxi vehicles that operate 24-7 and burn through battery life fast. CATL didn't just pull this tech from thin air. They've been working closely with EV makers, especially Chinese manufacturers like BYD ID and XPeng to integrate sodium ion packs into real production vehicles. Some versions of the BYD Seagull already use sodium-based battery variants in China's domestic market. The Seagull is a compact city EV priced under $10,000, and its sodium battery pack allows it to deliver solid range with lower cost and higher safety. Tesla has also been linked to sodium ion development through supply chain rumors, particularly involving KTL's plans for low-cost battery packs for emerging markets. While not confirmed publicly, insiders report that Tesla is testing sodium batteries for future small models or robo-taxi fleets where ultra-long cycle life and low cost matter more than maximum performance. What's more, sodium ion tech is format compatible with existing EV platforms. That means future cars won't need entirely new battery architectures to make the switch. This reduces development time, lowers costs, and speeds up rollout. Expect to see sodium batteries appearing in scooters, buses, home storage systems, Systems, and then quietly in mainstream EVs starting in China and then moving west. So now that sodium can go head to head with lithium on speed, range, and lifespan, what does that mean for the companies still invested in the old way of doing things? Let's take a look at the collision course between legacy automakers and this disruptive new battery tech and why some giants may not survive what's coming. The EV market is moving fast and not everyone is keeping up. While new players like BYD, Xpeng, and NEO are charging ahead with next gen battery tech, some of the biggest names in the industry are at risk of falling behind. Companies like Toyota and Volkswagen have spent billions building supply chains, factories, and partnerships around lithium ion technology. That's a problem because the shift to sodium ion batteries is already happening, and it's happening fast. Toyota, for instance, has only recently begun rolling out its first mass market EVs while still clinging tightly to its hybrid lineup. Meanwhile, it has invested heavily in solid state lithium technology, which is promising but still years away from commercial readiness. The same goes for 
for Volkswagen. Despite ambitious goals for electrification, much of its battery development is tied to lithium platforms. As sodium batteries become more practical and affordable, these companies are faced with a choice, double down on old tech or scramble to pivot. But pivoting isn't easy when your entire manufacturing ecosystem is optimized for lithium cells. That includes battery form factors, thermal management systems, and even software. By the time legacy automakers retool and sign new contracts for sodium-based cells, Chinese competitors may have already eaten into their market share. Especially in the low-cost EV segment, 2025 is already shaping up to be the year sodium ion batteries go mainstream. It's not just KTL anymore. Hina Battery, in partnership with the China Three Gorges Corporation, began mass production in early 2025, targeting energy storage and low-cost EVs. CATL followed closely with production-ready cells integrated into smaller EVs and commercial vehicles. The volume is no longer small batch or experimental. KTL's sodium batteries are being rolled out in thousands of units monthly, with plans to scale to millions. By 2026, they're expected to hit full integration into smart energy grids, public buses, and even urban delivery fleets. And this is just the beginning. According to market analysts, the global sodium ion battery market is projected to grow at a compound annual growth rate, CAGR, of over 22% through the next decade. Pair this with the fact that sodium ion batteries can also help to clean up the supply chain. The growth rate might be higher. Mining for lithium and cobalt has serious environmental consequences. In contrast, sodium is easy to extract, doesn't require massive amounts of water, and is widely available without geopolitical strings attached. This changes the sustainability equation in a big way. Less mining means fewer carbon emissions, less land degradation, and lower water usage. Battery production could also become more localized. Countries without lithium resources can now participate in the EV and energy storage market by sourcing sodium domestically. This reduces emissions from global shipping and creates regional manufacturing opportunities. This technology also simplifies end-of-life recycling. Sodium ion cells are made from non-toxic materials, which means less hazardous waste and easier processing. Combine that with the longer cycle life of sodium batteries, often exceeding 10,000 charge cycles, and the environmental impact over time becomes dramatically lower. Sodium ion batteries are no longer a lab project or a maybe someday idea. They're real, they're rolling off assembly lines, and they're already reshaping markets in China and beyond. They charge faster, last longer, cost less, and are safer. And they don't require materials controlled by just a few countries. It's hard to say if lithium will disappear entirely. After all, it still has a place in high performance applications. But for the average consumer, for public transit, for rural electrification, and for building a cleaner, cheaper energy future, sodium is already starting to win. And as more companies adopt it, economies of scale will only speed up the shift. This feels like a moment people will look back on, the year we stopped relying on rare, risky materials and started building a truly scalable global battery solution. The electric future is happening, and sodium just made it way more accessible. So what's your take on sodium ion batteries? Do you think they're ready to take over the EV world? Drop your thoughts in the comments, we'd love to hear from you. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more deep dives into the tech that's shaping our future. Until next time, stay curious and stay charged.